surprise. And yeah. Paper's <laughs> roll. Shame to say. Paper's roll. Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you on today's induction. Well, thank you. Thank you. And I'd um, I'd like to also say that during the years, over the years, you've been honored so many times with numerous oh. accolades, and the Rock Walk is basically recognizes people for a significant contribution and influence in the music industry. How do you feel about that, being well, here today? If you're going to be honored for something, that's the right thing to be honored for. Yes, honor, honoring for something significant is always better than <laughs> insignificant. Yeah. That's good. Uh, we're, we're honored. We're proud. It's, it's, yeah. a, it's a nice, uh, it's, it's great to be in great company, and uh, you know, Hollywood is Hollywood, you know, it's kind of a, it's a cool Long deal. Long way from home, though. That's all right. <laughs> all good, all good. So, growing up in Philadelphia, you were influenced more by the black R&B sound than... Well, we were influenced by the whole sound of Philadelphia. And uh, you can't really say black versus white in Philly. It's, it's a very integrated city, uh, traditionally, historically, and everything. Um, and we were influenced by what was around us. We were influenced by the neighborhoods, by, the, by what was going on in the, in, 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 in the local schools, on the street corners, in the local band scene. Um, the whole thing sort of uh, combined into this integrated white-black thing that, that is the sound of Philadelphia. We have our own version of what we invented our own version, and it, it, it shares a lot of similarities with people like Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff and, uh, and other people who uh, uh, have another sound of Philadelphia, but, it, but, it, but there's, uh, there are certain characteristics about it that make it a, uh, a really important and long-lasting regional sound. But from where you started, you kind of started from a more R&B, soulful place and kind of incorporated more rock and roll as the years went on? Mm, that's a little simplified, too. I, 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 think, we, I think we incorporated our, our life experience and our travels in the world and, and the things that, you know, are our, our surroundings and, and the people who surround us. They, that's really what, it, what made yeah. our music what it is. The, the, as Daryl said, the Philadelphia roots are at the essence and the core of it all. But, but then, you know, we've grown as people. And as we've grown as people, I think we've, we've kind of evolved into our own sound. So do you still, do you feel that even now, all these years later, you still have that Philly sound incorporated? Yeah. It's always at the heart of what we do. Yeah. I mean, what, what we, we invented our version of Philly sound, and we really haven't strayed from it since, we, since the beginning. Mm -hmm. we, we've tried different things and ways of combining it and, and, and tried to expand upon the idea, but it's, a, it's really never uh, the core of it. It's always stayed the same. So what were your first instruments? Mine was a guitar. <clears throat> what kind? What kind? Mm -hmm. the, the actual make, <laughs> make and model? Uh -huh. Oh, it was a, um, I think it was a K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A K. A K. <laughs> probably cost like 10 bucks or something. <laughs> yeah, we got it, I think we got it somewhere in, uh, in the city, in New York City. And um, yeah, you know, I'm, actually my really first guitar was one that my neighbor lent me. But I couldn't play because the strings were about that far off the neck. So um, I evolved to, uh, I, you know, I keep, went up in, in, in class to a K and went on from there. And yours? I started on the keyboard on piano at like five years old. And uh, I came to the guitar really late. I mean, I didn't start playing guitar probably till the late 70s, around that time. But uh, yeah, as a kid, I was a piano player. And you wouldn't happen to still have those instruments? Uh -huh. I, ha I do. You do? I have that first guitar, yes. Wow. Uh -huh. I'm sure that um, would be quite a collector's item. Mm, I don't know about that, but OK. <laughs> well, back in the early 70s, while you were recording uh, Abandoned Luncheonette, you introduced electronic arrangements back then uh, using computer-based instruments. Do you feel like you were ahead of your time at that point? Because well, <laughs> a lot of computerization didn't come in yeah. really popular time. We were always inter interested in taking whatever was out there, whatever new thing was out there, and, and using it as a tool. We, you know, we never thought of it in terms of, well, we're going to try and use computer-generated things or whatever. I mean, all that we had to choose from in those days were very simple, like mini Moogs and things like that, ARP synthesizers. Right. It was hardly anything. I mean, other than that, it was, uh, you was know, it? yeah, then you were back to uh, Fender Rhodes and Walter. Wallachers and Hammonds. Mm -hmm. so, Guitars and amps. Yeah, you know, so it, uh, we, we were very much into trying different things just to get different sounds. That was the whole idea. It wasn't the, it wasn't the instruments itself, it was trying, trying to, uh, to uh, de deal with brand new sounds. Well, although on the, on the Abandoned Luncheonette album, we actually, and, and even the whole Oats album, we actually incorporated, what we did is we took a natural instrument like a, a saxophone or a, a clarinet or whatever it was, and we processed it through an ARP 2600, which I think was pretty unique for the early 70s. And I think to we do turned it backwards, like too. Yeah, we did all sorts of things like yeah. that. So, we, you know, as Darrell said, we used, uh, we, you know, everything is a, is a, every instrument is a tool. Whether it's an electronic or it has wooden strings, it really makes no difference. It's how you use it. Hmm. Seems so. Okay. Um, 
Tell me about your songwriting techniques. How did you develop your songwriting techniques? Well, we learned from the masters, really. Uh, I mean, I, I learned from guys like Tommy Bell and, and Gamble and Huff. We started in a very traditional yeah. way. Like yeah. the traditional songwriters of the old in the Calio days. Parkway days, you know. Mm -hmm. right? Again, that's that Philadelphia thing. What, learning how to put a, put a lot into three minutes, or four. In those days, it was three minutes, and, uh, and those guys were, were really the masters of it. You know, they created it was early rock and roll, early soul music, and uh, we we sat at their feet and, uh, and and were involved with those people in the very beginning of our, our writing careers, and uh, yeah, you know, you just listen to records and then try and make your own version of them. Great. I, w I have a lot more I would love to ask you, but my time is up. But okay. thank you very thank much. Thank you. Okay. Time. Thanks. It's nice meeting you. Thanks. Okay. Thanks.